Hello YouTube, Captain Mac here, and welcome back to the lake of a virtual airline pilot. Now I know I tend to try to bounce around from uh, one series to another so we don't get a lot of the same stuff. Um, and uh, the last flight to release was a life of a virtual airline pilot flight. And the reason I decided to do that on this one is I was actually just trying to decide what I want to fly today. Um, I'm having some issues with my flight factor 767 here in uh, X-Plane 12. I can get the 400 to work, which we're going to do some flights in that. Um, but I can't get the cargo aircraft to work, the 300 freighter. I'm not really sure why. I have a friend who's got the 300 freighter and his works fine, but he doesn't have the 400. And the way Flight Factor does it, I bought the 400 initially, then I added on the 300, and so it's the same key for the 300 as I had for the 400. That's just the way they do it. But when I put that key in to update to the beta, it just keeps updating the 400 instead of the 300. So I can't get the thing to work right now. So I'm going to have to contact Flight Factor, figure that out, or just wait until they figure it out. I don't know. But either way, I wanted to do another flight in X-Plane, and I really, really enjoyed this Zebo 737. And so I decided, you know what, let's continue our USA tour with Mac Air and uh, carry on with the Life of Virtual Airline Pilot series. So we're going to fly today from Nebraska. You may recall that's where we landed last time at KBFF in Scotts Bluff, Western Nebraska Regional. And we're going to be flying to KFSD, which is in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Should be a good little flight today. Uh, I think I've got Pack X working properly now, so we'll get that up and running right now. I've just got the folks cleaning the aircraft, and here in a moment we'll hop on board and we'll start getting everybody loaded up and uh, make sure the aircraft is ready to fly. Alrighty, folks, welcome to the flight deck. As always, let's start by taking a look at our flight plan for the day using our, well, I gotta find it over here there we go sim toolkit pro as we normally do uh, it is I'm on version 1.0.2 there is another update uh, I saw that after I got everything fired up so I'm not gonna mess with it today it's a relatively short flight only one waypoint on our flight um, we could add more there are no departures there are no arrivals only the approach uh, when we get into South Dakota so it's gonna be an air distance of 347 nautical miles there you can see it KBFF to KF SD and our 737-800. We're looking at 14,540 pounds of fuel on board the aircraft today. And our payload down here, 38,000 pounds with 100. It's actually, I think, 150. I don't think it holds 165, to be honest with you. I don't know. But again, using uh, when you use SimBrief, you either have to tweak your settings or you have to create your own profiles. I just haven't done any of that. I just kind of go with the default and we just kind of go with it. It's not a huge deal to me, but if it is to you guys, let me know down in the comments and we'll try and be a little more precise with that. Also, with that in mind, even though we've done plenty, of, we've done at least two, I think, uh, two different full flight tutorials. Now, we did one full flight tutorial on the PMDG 737, uh, and then I am in the process right now of doing some very specific uh, in-depth tutorials for the PMDG 737. The Zebo really is, as far as I can tell, is pretty close to being on par with that PMDG aircraft, if not better in some ways. And that's not a dig against the PMDG aircraft. That being said, if you are interested in a Zebo 737 full flight tutorial, Please make sure to let me know down in the comments. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up. All of that good stuff. And that way uh, I'll know that that's what you want. Real quick uh, before we bug out of here. there Again, there is no departure. There is no arrival. So just take a quick look here. Uh, this is our airport ground chart using Navigraph charts with Sim Toolkit Pro. Uh, ATIS, we've already pulled it. 126.6. Uh, actually, no. Uh, that's incorrect because this is the Sioux Falls airport chart. <laughs> we need to go over here to KBFF and it is 121.025. I did pull the ATIS, wind is 2905, uh, temperature 8, dew point 2, and 3002 on the altimeter. Columbus Radio 122.6 and then uh, the Unicom 123.0. It says non towered airport. Uh, and we are located right here in front of the terminal. We're going to be taking runway 30, so when we do taxi, we're uh, actually along the terminal, not pointed at it. So we'll just uh, taxi forward, swing it around up here to Bravo, and then hold short of the runway. So that takes care of both your flight plan and your taxi brief. Alrighty then, welcome back to the flight deck. Uh, let's get Pack up X, bleh, Pack X up and running. I'm, I did it once just to see if it worked, and it worked fine. So we'll launch it from here. Should pop up here in the middle, maybe. 
ah there we go now I'm gonna move it over here so that you don't have to stare at it and we'll get this fired up really quick using our career mode through pack X and I'm going to lower the passenger count from pack X because it doesn't actually affect our um, weight and balance in the aircraft it just has to do with how long it takes pack X to do its thing so I'm gonna just put it at you know like 70 packs so that hopefully it doesn't take too long for the aircraft to load and then uh, everything else should be good to go so we'll start that you should hear him start boarding here momentarily yep you can just hear him back there uh, we could look at the settings and maybe turn that audio up a little bit but I don't think I'm gonna mess with that we could just uh, let's see yeah so you can crank it up a little bit uh, we'll keep it down just a little bit there and then uh, oh, it's just doing all kinds of weird stuff over here all right, so with that said, I have not closed the flight deck door yet, so we'll close that. Did you know you can actually, through the settings menu, you can display passengers in the back there? We're not going to do it, but there you have it. So let's take a look real quick down here at our flight plan for the day, already on the takeoff reference page. Now, somebody made a comment, something about, um, what did they say? They said, I was really surprised to see you use a flaps 10 takeoff, isn't flaps 5 like normal or something like that. I did a little look and I couldn't find anything that specifically said that flaps 5 is the normal takeoff flaps for the 737 in any version, 700, 800, whatever. However, uh, I did find something that was a pretty detailed description of how a takeoff is performed in the aircraft and it did discuss that takeoff using flaps somewhere between flaps 1 and 5. So I went ahead and set it to flaps 5. We've got 82, almost 8,300 feet of runway to work with. Uh, so we should be able to make our v-speed no problem because we're going to do a full thrust takeoff we're not derating our thrust at all so just going to the route real quick uh there it is kbb kbff to kfsd mac air flight one two three and then uh, for our actual route <coughs> it automatically puts the discontinuity in there every time i put a waypoint in. now i don't know if that's maybe the way some of the aircraft uh, FMC's behave in real life. I do know that the individuals behind the Zebo 737 are real world 737 pilots and they take most of their feedback from uh, 737 line pilots. So that may be what it does, uh, but we're going to leave the discontinuity since we don't have an actual departure and then we'll clean that up after takeoff. And then when we go to our takeoff page, again, we're going to be using full thrust. So this is just the takeoff reference page, but the N1 reference page, if we went there, uh, that's on performance. Uh, 370 is our altitude. And then N1 limit, it's going to be max takeoff, 26,000 pounds. And then back to our takeoff page. So there you have it there. That's pretty much the flight plan for the day. Pretty straightforward stuff. If we take a look at our MCP, We've got 146, which is our V2 speed. Now this is, again, somebody put in the comments. They said, listen, the aircraft will adjust its uh, uh, V2 plus whatever on takeoff. And that particular article I found that described the takeoff pretty detailed kind of said the same thing. It said you just set V2 on the MCP, and then uh, the aircraft, uh, the flight director, will basically direct you uh, vertically to try and maintain V2 plus uh, somewhere between 10 and 20 knots. So I'm going to go with that today and see how that works out because I haven't done that in the past. Uh, but don't be surprised if in future videos you see me put that at uh, V2 plus 5 or 10 just out of habit. So something to keep in mind. 370 on the altitude. Put this bad boy to RTO. If we take a look up top here really quick, obviously the IRS alignment has already been complete come down here the yaw damper is on we're looking good there flight or uh, fuel pumps can stay off for the moment cabin utility and IFE passenger switches are both on standby power is on we are running on ground power at the moment we'll start the APU momentarily coming down here uh, we could put no smoking on and fasten seat seatbelt signs can go on emergency exit lights are armed and then coming up here window heat is on probe heat is off all the anti-ice is off right now I went ahead and put the electric hydraulic pumps on you can see on our doors here forward cargo aft cargo forward entry and we're using the air stairs on this bad boy today everything else looks good on here we can put on our anti-collision lights I do have it set for this uh, the position light to trigger the takeoff announcement uh, looking good on here we can put packs on but because we're not running the APU and I don't have a ground air unit it's not going to do anything right now if we put APU bleed on, we'll leave that there, and then let's go ahead and fire up that APU while they finish loading the aircraft. Bring that down there, and I have a little hotkey 
or not. That's supposed to be a hotkey for uh, pack X, not for. Uh, maybe I hit. Maybe I hit the wrong key. Let's resume flight. Nope, does the same thing. So resume flight. Uh, but that's supposed to be my hotkey for pack X to show me uh, how much longer we have for loading. But either way, I think we're going to be fine. So 370 on there, and then when I look at my chart for KFST, it's 1430 feet. So we can put this at 1450. That's way too far. There we go, 1450. And I'm happy with everything else up here, which means all of our pre-flight is done. If this will, there we go. Didn't want to change views there. Uh, so I will jump back on here momentarily. We will be done boarding. We'll start engines and get ready to taxi out. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard flight 123 with service to South Dakota. Our flight time will be roughly Guys, one on hour board. and two minutes. Alrighty, so we just now got the notification that they're ready to go in the back. Let's get things closed up here. Uh, let's see. We don't need it. That's already disconnected. Air stairs can be retracted. Let's get these doors closed here. Back. This guy closed here. And then remove the chocks, go to the home page. And I've learned this the hard way. Double check up here and make sure your doors show up as closed. All right, so we're ready to start engines. So the engine start process is very simple here. Uh, we are going to turn the packs off. There we go, packs off. And then we're gonna use the right ignition on this one. And we're gonna start with engine number two, roll that to ground. All right, we've got and that is not the view I was looking for, that is. And then we're just watching for 25 on the N2. Now, somebody correct me down in the comments. Uh, I feel like it was supposed to be 15, maybe. Maybe it was 15 at one point, and I was doing it at 25, and somebody corrected me. But I'm pretty sure in the 767, it's 15, and then it, I think it's 25 in the 737. But I could definitely be wrong on that. So, like I said, if you think about it, let me know down in the comments. I'd appreciate it. So, there we're starting on engine number one. I will come back here momentarily. We'll have both the engines started. We'll finish cleaning things up before taxi, and we'll get this bird started. When instructed to do so, open the plastic pouch and remove the vest. Flip it over your head. Wrap the straps around your waist and buckle up the front. Pull the strap to tighten. Alrighty, that's two good starts. Let's hop up to the overhead here and make sure that we are off the APU. Made that mistake once too. <laughs> then we can go ahead and turn the APU itself off. Probe heat can come on. Packs can come back on as well. We can turn the APU bleed off and we can get those wing lights on. We don't need logo lights or wheel well lights. I think we're good to go on those. These are going to go to continuous. Taxi light is going to come on. Everything else looks good up here. We do need to do our flight controls checks. We'll come down here and go to system. And we'll go full left, full right, and neutral all the way up. All the way down and neutral. And then full left, full right, and neutral. Flaps need to go to five. That's one, two, and five. Put this back on the engine page. This is already set to RTO. Let's go ahead and arm the auto throttle now. LNAV, VNAV, it's not going to let me do those. It says, oh, because of the discontinuity, it's not going to let me do that. Okay, that's fine. So we've got our initial altitude set. Our initial runway heading is going to be, and I'm just going to double check it here, uh, 306 degrees. So we're going to set that on here right now. It sounds like I've got two safety briefs going because I think what I've got going is I've got Pack X crossing over the uh, the default uh, briefs and stuff that take place on the, the Zevo 737. So that's probably what's going on there. But either way, we're ready to taxi out here. Let's get to a proper view. Track I are coming on a little jump here. And then I'm going to have to center that up again because it's track IR, right? <laughs> so I always feel like I'm not centered, too. It's kind of crazy. So let's go ahead and get the parking brake off. There we go. And in case anybody's wondering, I am indeed running ACARS on this one. There we go. ACARS is up and running. This is a flight for Mac Air. Bring just a little bit of thrust in there. She'll get moving pretty easy, usually. There you go. Starting to pull out there. And then again, we're going to have to swing it around and taxi back in the other direction. So what I'm going to do is what I normally do here. I'm going to go ahead and complete the taxi. Maybe have a little cinematic in here or something like that. And then I will see all of you back here when we are holding short of the runway.
Alrighty folks, just pulling up to the hold short line of the runway here. Springer to a nice easy stop real quick. There we go. Let's just make sure. I don't think I set the uh, TCAS. No, I did not. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> there we go. TCAS over to TARA maybe? Why does it say ATC1? Maybe because it's doing 1200 there? I don't know. <laughs> 0400, that's going to be our... Uh, transponder code today okay so we got the uh, transponder on TAR traffic mode has already been activated on here I don't see any aircraft on final so let's go ahead and get our landing lights on we should get our uh, takeoff announcement as soon as we go to the strobe light yep fantastic this one come off we don't need runway turn off lights in the middle of the day so let's go ahead and start taxiing out here on the runway now we do have like I said almost 8300 feet of runway which should be plenty but it's still not a lot uh, and while the aircraft is not super heavy it is a little heavy why does my view need to keep being adjusted oh you know what I'm zoomed in that's why okay uh, so we'll pull her out here we want to use as little runway as possible um, as we get lined up here just so that we have maximum amount of runway for our takeoff so we're gonna shoot past the center line here a little bit uh, the landing gear, front nose gear is right about there, so we'll swing around here. I might have overshot it just a hair, but that's all right. Yeah, I overshot it just a little bit, I think. No, actually, I think I ended up undershooting it a little bit. That's all right. Let's go ahead and get them up to about 60%. Looking good. And toga. All right. Let's see if we can get her off the ground at flaps five. Good. Thrust set. Airspeed alive. Eighty knots. Check. I think we'll be all right here. So we're supposed to rotate to about ten degrees nose up. Coming up on V one. V one. V one. 10 degrees nose up. 10 degrees nose up. Ooh. Positive rate. So it started to go nose up. Let's get the gear up here. And then uh, and then it didn't want to for a second. So 400. <laughs> Which I've noticed tends to happen a little bit with this aircraft. Not really sure why. Uh, I'm not sure if that's realistic or not. So we're just following the flight director for a minute. We are uh, just basically on vectors right now, right? Because we have that flight discontinuity. So let's give her just a touch of trim there. And we're looking good. So we can go over here. We've already got the legs page up over here. So we can just select ONL, maybe. There we go. Put it right in there. Execute that. And that's going to set us up for an immediate turn. VNAV and LNAV can come on now. Autopilot can come on. And it'll go right into that turn. There we go, and it's going to nose over just a little bit, start bringing that speed up, and as it does, we can go ahead and go to flaps 2. There you go. And then once we get above that flaps 1 line, we can go to flaps 1 right there. Let's go ahead and take the uh, auto, uh, the RTO off. Turn the landing gear in the off position, or locked position. It says off on there. I think it's, supposed, I think it's the locked position, though, isn't it? And we're just about to that flaps up position there as we come around the corner. So we'll go ahead and put the flaps all the way up there. And then once the flaps are up and the leading edge uh, slats are in, we should see the speed change to either 240 or 250. I don't remember what I have set in the FMC right now. We'll just keep an eye on that. There's the leading edge flaps coming in, and there it goes to 250 right there. So that looks good. Let me track IR off here and jump to a different view. And we're looking pretty solid here. So she's getting on course, no problem. Uh, we got a little ways to go before we get above 10,000 feet. We can go ahead and get these guys back over to the off position. And then the only thing we're really waiting on here is to get 10,000 feet, and that'll complete our after takeoff checklist. And that means, you guessed it, ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for some of that obligatory elevator music.
Alrighty, folks, we're just settling into our cruise altitude here. Uh, let's give an announcement real quick for the passengers in the back. And we can't really hear it, that's fine. Oh, now we can hear it. <laughs> so he's giving the announcement in the back. Uh, but as you can see, we're going to be on our top of descent before you know it. So we're going to go ahead and get business taken care of for us. First things first, let's take a look at our arrival or our approach brief in this case. Um, and just as a quick note, see how this says I'm late up here? I don't really know if that's because of the time that was set for the um, flight plan and I'm just off or what, but apparently I'm always late. So either way, we're going to be, as of right now anyway, uh, we're going to be taking the... Arnav or GPS runway 15 approach into Sioux Falls, South Dakota. There is no arrival procedure coming in here. ADIS uh, is on 126.6, Sioux Falls approach on 125.8, Minneapolis Center on 132.05, and Sioux Falls Tower on 18.3. Then when we get on the ground, it'll be 21.9. Uh, this is for the WAS approach. I've mentioned that before. I'm still waiting to get some feedback from somebody. Still not entirely sure. Uh, how that works. That is for a very specific uh, RNAV approach. I forget what it's called now off the top of my head because I haven't messed with it in a little while. But either way, for us, it's going to be the normal RNAV approach. So, final approach course is 150 degrees, and our final approach point is at uh, Sea Dam at 2,900 feet, and decision altitude is going to be 410 feet ATL. Airport elevation is 1,430 feet, touchdown zone elevation 1,429 feet, so pretty flat where we're touching down. Minimum safe altitude in the area is 4,500 feet. For a missed approach, we're going to climb to 3,800 feet, direct to fence, pheasant, pheasant, and hold. Uh, transition altitude 18,000 feet. We're going to come in over here at Friary, and then from Friary to Seapol, down to Sea Dam, Weeder, and then on in from there. So at Seapol, we want to be at 3,800 feet, 2,900 at Sea Dam, and then we should hopefully be a visual from there. And then again, uh, we're going to be using LNAV and VNAV. Uh, that's 480 feet LPV is the approach I was thinking of that's related to the WASP that's supposed to be uh, more accurate so as you can see it gives us a decision altitude of 410 feet uh, but that's not what we're using today because I still don't know how to fly it properly and I can't find any good information on it so somebody's got to know I just can't seem to find it so there you have it that's going to be our approach brief for the day and let's take a look at what we got on here so about 80 nautical miles 85 nautical miles from top descent I'm just going to go ahead and roll this down for now, so we're going to set it to 3,800 for the moment. Actually, I'm going to set it to 2,900. I'm going to tell you why I'm going to set it to 2,900. Because if you don't get it set quick enough, uh, you'll miss that next descent point, and then you're in trouble. I've done that a couple times already. So we've got that set right there. If we jump down here, the approach is already in here. Uh, so if we go to our legs page, you can see there we are, Fry Recipe, C Dam. Uh, these always say at or above. Not a fan of that. Not sure if that's uh, what it does in the real aircraft. I typically try to make these a hard altitude, and that way uh, the aircraft knows I want to be at that altitude when I get there. That little ding, I get that every time I make a change. Um, I don't know if there's a way to adjust that or not, but either way, 2900 there. And then if we're going to continue to use the uh, VNAV from CDAM, then at Weedor, we need to be at uh, 2160. Now this says at or above, but if I make it a hard altitude, maybe it'll fly it a little better, right? Doubt it. Don't know, but either way, we'll execute that, and then we've got our altitudes taken care of. If we go to our initial reference page. We are looking at uh, 8,000 feet of runway, so it's not super short. I think we can do flaps 30, 147 knots. I think that'll work just fine. So we'll take that. That's going to be our VREF. Put it back on our progress page for now just so I can keep an eye on that top descent coming up. And everything else is pretty much ready to go. Do we have a descent? Yeah. So let's let them know we're going to descend soon. All right. He's making that announcement in the back. And I'm going to break away for a couple of minutes. I will see you back on here when we are ready to set up for the approach. Alrighty, folks. You can see we're just a little under 10 nautical miles from Seapol nine miles now uh, we get the flaps set to two speeds coming down nicely we're looking pretty good not too uh, too concerned with its speed or uh, slowing down any quicker uh, I didn't do the performance tool there is a performance uh, tool in here it is I think in here yeah there's a landing performance uh, flaps we're doing flaps 30 runway is 15 uh, it's dry, wind is calm, outside air temperature is 15, 
I wish that wasn't uh, set to eight to hectopascals, but it is 1013 if I'm not mistaken. So we're actually pretty good there. Uh, reverse, it says no credit. Speed brakes, uh, those are set to auto. Uh, what else? Oh, we got to put it, you got to put your landing weight in there. So if we look down here, we're 140.2. Put that in there real quick. One four zero point two. I don't know if this actually gives us. Yeah, it does give us something, doesn't it? Uh, so auto brake one gives us twenty seven ninety eight meters, and our runway distance or our runway length is. Uh, I got Does it even show it in meters on here? It doesn't. It's just eight thousand feet, which is uh, around four thousand meters. A little more than four thousand meters. I'm not that good at converting in my head, of course. But either way, uh, I think auto brake uh, one or two will work just fine. So I think we're going to go with uh, auto brake two just for just to be safe about it. So put this over here, auto brakes two, and speed's coming in nicely at 180. That's about what we want to make the turn at. And then uh, from C pull to uh, C dam is seven miles. So. As we start to make the turn, we'll bring in the next setting of flaps, maybe drop the gear to help it slow down a little bit, and we'll just start lining her on up. So I'll do my usual thing. I'll either speed things up a little bit here, or we'll just skip ahead until we're getting on to that short final. All right, about three and a half miles from CDM. Let's get the proper view here. Get the track IR coming on. That's not really a proper view, is it? And as usual, we'll have to center it up a little bit here. There we go. Make sure it's zoomed out. We do have the runway in sight. Let's go ahead and bring in the next setting of flaps. That'll put us at flaps 15. Gear is down. We do have three green. Landing lights are on. Engine start switches are set to continuous. APU is currently off. Packs are on. Seatbelt signs are on. We are good to go. There we are coming into 159. We're looking for 146 as our V refs. Let's go flaps 25. Just keeping an eye on things here. We're VNAV path right now. We're right on our required navigation performance, so we're good there. Need her to come down just a wee bit more before we get to CDAM. Would have been nice really to be to 2900 before getting to CDAM, if I'm being honest with you. And we got about a half a mile to CDAM. Runway's clearly in sight. Let's just uh, finish getting the flaps out there, getting things set up, and then we will take control of the aircraft ourselves. Coming up now, point two from CDAM, settling in at 2,900, and then it should continue the descent. No, we need to continue the descent. So there we go, autopilot coming off. Next setting of flaps coming in. I'm gonna leave the uh, auto throttle on for the moment if I can get my brain to work here. And I'm just trying to get that nose to come over a little bit. We are flaps 30, so we're good to go on that. The auto spoilers are armed. I really need this thing to come over a little though. It just does not want to descend. We should be descending at about uh, 750 feet per minute, but because it took us so long to start descending, uh, we're not doing so good on that. Okay, auto throttles off. My airplane entirely. I don't like that thing flashing at me. There we go. Now that speed's coming in where I want it. There we go. Looking good. Looking good. We're fine. We're descending just a little fast, but I'm just trying to get back where we're supposed to be here. And we're just a touch below our V ref, but we're going to be fine. Let's bring in a tiny more thrust here, and we're going to just come right onto this glide slope. So that's something I've noticed. Uh, I should have changed that uh, altitude uh, on the MCP, which I need to change right now. It should be at 3,800. I should have changed that to the 2100. Stay down there. There we go. 300. We're right on the glide slope, so we're good. I can see the pappy lights. All right, let's take her in here. 200. Oh, that was a little freeze up there. All right, we're looking good. 100. 50. 40. 30, 20, 10. Little long, but not too bad. Alright, full reverse thrust here. 
Auto brakes are good. Ooh, got a little squirrely there, Big didn't nice. I? Manual braking. I don't know why it's... I mean, there's like no crosswind to speak of. I don't know why he keeps trying to pull so hard to the left. Alright, let's get those uh, reversers off there. Looking good. Fantastic. Go ahead and fire up that AP. That was a good landing, actually. Not sure what the landing rate was, but I thought it was pretty darn good. Get that out of the way there. Yeah, it still keeps wanting to go to the left over here. Not really sure why, to be honest with you. Let's go ahead and bring... Uh, there we go. So I found out that's not somebody screaming. <laughs> that's actually the... Uh, oh, that's a tight turn for that. That is actually the um, the electric motor taking the speed brakes back to zero. <laughs> that's what that is. Alright, let's get the taxi light on. Get these guys off. There we go. And strobe light can come off as well. No, nope. That guy. There we go. Looking fantastic. Start going and bringing those flaps up. Light directors can come off. One and two. There we go. Looking good there. Just slide her up around the corner and keep bringing those flaps up. APU will be up and running here momentarily. I'm going to go ahead and taxi the aircraft in, get us parked at a gate, and then I'll see you all back here when we're ready to shut things down and wrap up this fleet. All right, parking brake set. Let's go ahead and uh, shut down engine number one for the moment. I just want to see if I can get this. Uh, come on, there we go. And uh, let's get on the APU bus here, so we don't have any problems. I just want to see if I can get this uh, jetway to connect over here. So we're going to jump over here, and we're going to go to ground services doors. It just says locked right now, so I guess we got to shut down both engines in order to do that. So let's go ahead and shut down number two, and then that should give us the option there. Yeah. So forward, now that is because what? So how do I connect the jetway? That's one of the issues I've been having. I haven't figured out. You're supposed to be able to connect the jetways now in this sim, uh, but I don't know how to do that. Okay, so I figured it out. I just needed to set a hotkey. So we're coming in over there. We should be able to open that door now without any problem, right? Uh, it's still going to give us a bunch of blinking, but hopefully once the jetway connects here, that'll stop blinking at us let's see what happens okay yep now it's open and we can turn the seatbelt sign off and we can let everybody start off well, let's see what happens there turn that off and so pack x should start the offload now oh there they go now they're starting to offload the aircraft i was like are they going to offload or what okay so apu bleed on because uh yeah they probably want some air back there i forgot to turn that on once we uh, got landed there. What else we got here? Logo lights can go off, uh, wing lights can go off as well. Any collision lights will stay on. Strobe lights are in the right position there. I'm good with that. All the other lights are off. We can get the fuel pumps off. We're going to leave the AP running for now, so that's going to leave that left. I believe it's the left aft is the one you're supposed to leave on for the APU. I could be wrong. Correct me down in the comments if I am. Uh, and everything else I think is good to go because we're just kind of in a turnaround state. I meant to push that back up. We're just uh, setting it kind of to a turnaround state. We would go to ground power. Obviously, we're not going to sit here on APU for however long it takes to offload and reload because that just burns fuel we don't need to burn.
but I'm not going to mess with it any further than that. And so that's going to wrap it up for this one, ladies and gentlemen. Real quick, because I tend to forget to do this on occasion. Let's bring our A cars over here. You can see uh, it shows us on here minus 85 feet per minute. So nice smooth landing. We did float it just a little bit. I feel like I have to pull back quite a bit harder on uh, the yoke with this uh, particular aircraft. It could could be more accurate, less accurate, I don't really know. I saw somebody did a comparison of flight dynamics for a Cessna 172 between Microsoft Flight Simulator and X-Plane 12, and really they were both pretty spot on. So, you know, that's a, that's a kudos to Microsoft Flight Simulator because I know X-Plane 12 uh, flight dynamics are pretty solid. So, kind of hard to say I'm not a 737 pilot in the real world, I couldn't tell you. Um, but maybe one of you is and you could tell me. So, let's go ahead and finish this up and file the PIREP give that just a second here and we are good to go and that's going to wrap it up for this one ladies and gentlemen if you enjoyed the flight please do give it a thumbs up that lets me know that you're enjoying what we're doing of course we are going to stick with the life of a virtual airline pilot series one way or the other but it certainly is an encouragement to me when i see lots of thumbs up because that tells me that you guys are actually enjoying the content so i appreciate that very much subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so we're at uh, 9100 and like 23 I'd love to see if we could hit 10,000 by the end of the year that would be absolutely fantastic um, not sure if it's going to happen. It's not a big deal if it doesn't. I think you guys are awesome. I love all of you. You're fantastic. And I have no complaints whatsoever. So with all of that said, thank you for joining me on this flight. And until next time, as always, keep the blue side up unless otherwise instructed by ATC. God bless you all and have an absolutely wonderful day.